All right, welcome back, Hananiga Geometry. Today we're going to talk about section 1.4, perimeter area. But before we get into that, let's do a couple of review type questions. So find the length of the segment with endpoints 2, negative 6 and negative 2, negative 5. Distance formula is x minus the other x squared and then y minus the other y squared. Now you may say a negative and a negative makes a positive, so that's fine. You end up with 4 squared plus negative 5 plus negative, negative 5 plus a negative plus 5, end up being negative 1 squared. And so you end up getting the square root of 17. So using a calculator, the square root of 17 is approximately 4.1. Next one. Now we're going to start getting into basic area. And so this is kind of a preview of what we're going to talk about today. But Stephanie wants to lay carpet in her family room that is 12 feet by 15 feet. How much carpet does she need? Area of a rectangle is base and height. So 12 times 15 using a calculator would be 180 square feet. And again, that's a little bit of a preview for what we're going to be talking about today. All right. Classifying polygons. Classifying polygons. First, you have to understand what a polygon is. Polygon is all straight sides. So in geometry, a figure that lies on a plane is called a plane figure. Recall that polygon is a closed plane figure. So each side intersects at what is called a vertex. You have a side of a polygon, and each one of these is a vertex of a polygon. Now, concave versus convex, and then classifying by the number of sides. Let's do the number of sides first. Notice over here there's a chart that you will need to know. So three sides is a triangle, four is a quadrilateral, five is a pentagon. Six is a hexagon, seven is a heptagon, eight is a nonagon, nine is a, excuse me, eight is an octagon, nine is a nonagon, ten is a decagon, twelve is a dodecagon. If we ever get something more than that, so let's say I had a, something that was 15 sides, we would call that a 15 agon. So whatever the number of sides are, agon. Now, interior or classifying something, whether it's concave or convex. Convex is if all the sides are outward, meaning it doesn't cross another side. Concave means if I draw a straight line, I'm going to hit another side. I like to refer to this as caved in. So if something is concave, it's caved in so that ultimately if I extend it aside, you would actually hit another side of the polygon. So here we go. We're going to classify this in two different ways. One, one, two, three, four sides. So this is a quadrilateral. And that is concave. Notice the reason why is this side right here, if I extended it, I would hit another side. Therefore, that is caved in. So the next one, there are six sides. So that's a hexagon and it's convex. Notice if I extended any of the sides, it would not hit another side. Area formulas. I don't usually worry too much about perimeter because perimeter is just adding up all the sides. But the area, you need to know the formula. For a triangle, it's half base and height. And when I say base and height, notice the height and a base make a 90 degree angle. So as long as you draw a line straight up and down and straight across, that is your base and height. So it's half base times height. Now, in a square, it is still area equals base and height. It just happens to be that the two sides are the same. So notice they put side squared, which would be the same as base and height. Next one, I usually use base and height again, but they use length and width. Base, height, multiply the two together, that's the area of a rectangle. And now for the one that's probably new to most of you. If it's a parallelogram, notice all of these have four sides. 
If it's a parallelogram, it's still base times height. You would just, just like the triangle was, straight up and down is your height, straight across is your base. It makes a 90 degree angle. So as I said, all of these, I actually consider to be the same formula. It just happens to be length times width, side times side. With that being said, find the perimeter of DEF with vertices of 1, 3, 4, negative 3, and 5, negative 4. Now, I'm going to change my graph here a little bit, so just bear with me a quick second. Uh, my graph is a little bit bigger than I would like, so I'm going to fix that. And there we go. All right, so I'm going to plot the points. 1, 3, 4, negative 3, and negative 4, negative 3. 4, negative 3, or negative 4, negative 4, negative 3. 3, and 1, positive 3. Plotting those points and labeling. So this would be D. This would be E, and this would be F. Perimeter. The perimeter of a figure is all the way around the figure, taking all of the sides. So side ED, side DF, and side FE. So how am I going to find the distance across? Well, F to D, I'm going to use the distance formula. So I'm going to use F and D. So 1 minus negative 4 squared plus 3 minus negative 3 squared. So I end up getting the square root of 5, or excuse me, five, 1 plus 4, which is 5, squared. 3 plus 3, which is 6, squared. And so I end up with the square root of 61. So I've got my calculator right now. Square root of 61 would be 7.8. So this side of the triangle is 7.8. Now let's try and let's try to find length E D using uh, E and D. So x minus x. So 1 minus 4 squared, negative 3. Negative 3 minus 3 squared. So ED equals square root of, I end up getting 1 minus 4, which is 3, negative 3 squared, which is 9, plus negative 6 squared is 36, so I end up with the square root of 45. Square root of 45, using my calculator, is 6.7. Now, it's really nice, and I'm going to use a different color here, really nice when we have a line that goes straight across. I no longer have to necessarily use the distance formula, I can just count. So going across here would be 8, and so now perimeter, 7.8 plus 6.7 plus 8, and I add all those up, I get 22.5. Find the area now. I want to know the area of this figure. First, I have to draw all the, all the points. And again, I apologize for having to switch this. A little too big for me to actually show you the picture here. Okay. So I'm going to plot those points. Negative 3, 5. So negative 3, positive 5. I'm going to label that J. Positive 1, 5. Label that K. 2, negative 1. L and negative 2, negative 1. M. So I want to find the area. Now, area is much nicer because all I need is the straight up and down. So if I go straight, straight down and I go straight across, that's my area of base times height. And so I don't need the distance formula here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This side is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. This side would be 4. The area of this figure is 24. So all of your quadrilaterals, area is base times height. 
You try. All right, go ahead and hit the pause button and see if you can do these by yourself. All right, welcome back. I want to find the area of this triangle. So you don't remember, the area is half base and height. So this side is 6. This side is 5. So the area of this figure is half 6 times 5. So the area is 15. Perimeter is a little more complicated. Now i got to add up all the sides. I already found 6 and 5. So now I just need to use the distance formula to find this side of the triangle. So now, 3 minus negative 2 squared, and then 3 minus negative 3 squared. So I'm taking x minus x squared and y minus y squared. So I end up with 5 squared would be 25, 6 squared would be 36, so I end up with the square root of 61. And if I remember right from earlier, the square root of 61 was about 7.8. So now, my perimeter, I'm going to take all the sides and add them up. 6 plus 5 plus 7.8, and I get 18.8 as my perimeter. Next one, going straight across, let's, start, let's do area first, because that's the easier question. Straight up and down is 3, straight across is 5, so the area of this figure is 15. Now, I need the 5 for the perimeter, but I actually don't need the 3. Perimeter is the outside length. So the, really the only thing I need to do is find the distance from here to here and here to here. So let's start with the one here on the left, the segment WZ. So distance would equal square root of Again, the same formula we used in section 1, 3. Negative 3 minus negative 1 squared plus negative 2 minus 1 squared. So I end up with uh, 4 plus 9, which is square root of 13. Using my calculator now, typing in the square root of 13, I get 3.6. So 3.6, this side is also 3.6, so adding all those up, I get 17.2 for my perimeter. Your homework assignment, check with your teacher, and good luck.